Now let's go ahead and look at the AF analytics that we use to calculate the remaining useful life. If you're not already in it, please open up Pi System Explorer. And then on the top left corner, click on Database. And then click on AF Example RUL. Go ahead and expand from the site to the unit to the pump. And then click on the sensor asset. Then on the main part of the screen, go ahead and click on the Analysis tab. Then we'll click and select the Bearing Life Calculation Analysis. Let's go ahead and go through this one by one and see what all the pieces of this analysis are doing. So first you'll see the Moving Average Event Variable. This returns an array of values, the length of which is specified by that Moving Average Event Count attribute. The next line here, moving average, calculates the average of all the values from the previous array. The following line, linear regression events, grabs the specified length of values uh, set up by the linear regression event count attribute. The next three attributes, linear regression events timestamp, start time, and end time, are all using this array and, and grabbing out timestamps. So the first one, Linear Regression Events Timestamp, gets an array of all the timestamps of all events we use for the linear regression. The first value brings out the start time. The last value brings out the end time. We do all this because we need them for the linear regression variable in the next line. We will do a linear regression on the moving average value from the start time of our 12 events, in this case, to the end time of our 12 events. Then the following variable fit checks for bad values of linear regression if something goes wrong and filters those out. Otherwise, we return the linear regression. We also need to check with the enable fit variable that we actually have enough events, in our case 12, to do a linear regression. Then you can see for the m, b, and r squared variables, we are just grabbing the results of the linear regression if we do not see a bad value and if our fit is enabled. Otherwise, we'll return nothing. Last but not least, we are seeing here the life expectancy variable. That again checks for bad fits and if we have fit enabled, and then checks for slopes that are positive and an R squared above 0.4. If all that is true, we then do some calculations to output how many days do we have left until we hit that high, high value. Using the result of life expectancy, we then can actually forecast a date and a time in the forecasted fail date variable on which the asset is expected to fail. All this is done as an event triggered basis. So when we get a new value in for the bearing vibration, we'll calculate all of this again. In the next step, we will see how all this looks in PyVision once all this calculation has been run for our sensor data.